We need several ingredients to make our Cincinnati style chili. We'll need water, ground beef, and a better grade of ground beef is preferred. We'll be using an 80-20 blend. We'll need garlic cloves, onion, bay leaves, whole cloves and whole allspice, tomato sauce, ground red pepper, ground cumin, chili powder, unsweetened cocoa, cinnamon, salt, vinegar, and Worcestershire sauce. To make our chili, we'll need a nice sized stock pot, wooden spoon, we'll need custard cups, measuring spoons, and a straight edge spatula. We'll need some cheesecloth and kitchen twine, a liquid measuring cup, and for the onion and garlic, you'll either need a chef's knife and a cutting board or uh, the mini chopper like we have here that I'm going to use. Our first step in making our Cincinnati style chili is to stir the beef in the water. So I have one pound of beef, um, every, I have two cups of water for every one pound of beef. So we're gonna break that up and stir it until it separates into a fine texture. There's no heat, even though you see the pot on the stove top. I have not turned the heat on yet, and you don't turn the heat on until you're finished stirring. So I just have to continue to stir this until it's all broken up throughout the liquid. So now that it's a fine texture, we're gonna bring our meat to a gentle boil. To do that, we're gonna turn our burner onto a medium high heat, that's seven or eight to begin. And then once it starts to boil, we'll turn it down to a medium low, a three or four, and we'll continue that gentle boil for 30 minutes. Now that our beef has come to a boil, we will stir it occasionally. We do not have to stir it constantly, but I'm gonna turn it down from that medium high, seven or eight, to medium low, three or four, and it'll maintain its gentle boil. So now we're gonna set the timer for 30 minutes. While our beef is gently boiling, we'll go ahead and prepare the other ingredients to add when it's the proper time. And so one of the things we're going to do is to finely chop the onion and garlic. So I've placed both of them in my mini chopper. And if you didn't have this, a chef's knife and a cutting board would be fine. I'm gonna lock that in place. Hear that click? And that's what's gonna allow it to uh, run the motor. So this does chop it extremely fine, which is perfect because it lets it blend into the rest of the recipe with ease. For my whole cloves, allspice, and bay leaf, I'll need to make what's referred to as a sachet. So you can see that the allspice, um, they're kind of small, and so Finding these to fish them out of our chili later would be a challenge. Same goes for the whole cloves. Okay, and so they're also not pleasant to bite into. So we wanna make sure that we can retrieve them from our chili easily. And that's where the sachet comes in. So we're gonna take some cheesecloth and we are going to cut a square of cheesecloth out with our kitchen shears. And then we are going to place our cloves, allspice, and bay leaves in the center of that cheesecloth. And then 
we'll take our kitchen twine and bind it together. And since this is a long cook process, the whole spices do a better job than the ground spices. So I'm gonna cut my kitchen twine into a nice long piece that's easy to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and break my bay leaves in half just to make them fit in the sachet better. And I'll pull opposite corners up first. And then I just wanna make sure that when I tie it, I tie it so that it's all enclosed. And to tie it, I'm going to tie just a simple knot. Again, I wanna check that and just make sure it's enclosed all around. Then I take the string to the other side tie it again. I'm going to wrap this a couple of times. I just want to make sure that nothing comes out, that the sachet stays together. And then when I've gone around there a couple times, I'll tie it twice or even three times right on top of itself to make a really good knot that will not come undone. And then I'm just going to trim that kitchen twine. So now I have my sachet ready to add to the pot at the proper step. So all of our dry spices get added to the saucepan at the same time. So we can put those into a custard cup together. And then the vinegar and Worcestershire sauce will get added at the same time as well. So we're going to put those in a separate custard cup from the dry spices. So for our dry spices, we need a quarter teaspoon of ground red pepper. And I can use the side of the lid for my straight edge spatula. So there's my ground red pepper. For the cumin, I need a half teaspoon and I will use my straight edge spatula so it's heaped over the top. I'm going to level it off and I want to try to get as much back into the container as I can. So there's my cumin. This recipe also calls for two tablespoons of chili powder and again this has the um, side that I can use. So there's my chili powder. One of the things that's unique about Cincinnati style chili is it has a hint of chocolate. So for that we're going to use cocoa. Some recipes call for actual unsweetened chocolate. And it's just a tablespoon. And then we also need a half teaspoon of cinnamon. And we need three-fourths teaspoon of salt in this same custard cup. And since salt doesn't have, since our measuring spoons don't have a three-fourths, I'll be using a half teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon. So that it doesn't get forgotten, I'm also going to set my sachet of uh, whole cloves, whole allspice, and bay leaf in the top. And then I'll set this custard cup near the stove top. Now I'm going to measure those liquid flavorings with measuring spoons and so it's important to remember I want it to bubble at the edge to make sure I have a full measure. So I need a measure over custard cup and a hold and wait by the side of the stove custard cup. So I'm going to start with my tablespoon of vinegar 
And I'm going to pour that into the measuring spoon until it bubbles at the edge. And then transfer it to the cup where it's going to wait with the Worcestershire sauce. So my Worcestershire sauce, I only need a teaspoon. But same technique, I'm going to pour the Worcestershire sauce in until it bubbles at the edge. And then move that in to the custard cup with the vinegar and then I'll set that by the side of the stove. Now that our beef has finished gently boiling for about 30 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add those remaining ingredients. We'll put our sachet in with all of the dry spices, our vinegar and Worcestershire. Just stir those in. This is also when we add our tomato sauce. And since the can had the amount I needed, I did not have to transfer it to a liquid measuring cup. And then additionally, this is when we'll add our garlic and onion that we've chopped or processed, minced or processed. So now we're gonna stir this. And we want this to cook at a simmer for about two hours. It needs to cook so long so that it can really develop flavor. And that would be true of just about any chili and most stews. So you can see here's our sachet. It just stays in there, and those uh, spices are able to add flavor in this long cooking um, chili. So we'll keep an eye on this. We'll stir it occasionally in that two hours time. And um, as it comes to a finish, if we find that too much water has evaporated, we can add some back or we can put a lid on it to stop evaporation from happening and still allow it to cook and continue to develop, to develop that depth of flavor. Cincinnati style chili can be enjoyed many ways. You can simply have it as a bowl of chili, often with a little bit of cheddar cheese on top. A fan favorite is referred to as the three-way. That's what we have on the plate with the spaghetti and the cheese. And uh, some people like to have a four-way with chopped onion or a five-way with beans and onion. Um, the beans are usually cooked in the chili if that's what you're choosing to serve. And then on the left, I have a chili cheese coney, which is a hot dog in a bun with the Cincinnati chili on it and some cheddar cheese on top. So a very versatile dish that can be enjoyed many different ways.